Our next inductee, I will tell you, is our golf historian. Anytime uh, myself, uh, Joe Sprague, anybody else had a golf question, this is the guy we went to because he knew more about golf in Rhode Island than all of us together. And it's, it's my pleasure to call Joe McDonald um, to induct our good friend Paul into the Rhode Island Golf Hall of Fame. Thanks, Bob. This is a special one for me, I'll tell you that. Paul Canyon has a unique approach to the game of golf. As a player, he would address the ball, it would always have the same rhythm. He would tap his back foot before he hit every shot and then make contact. He would repeat this rhythm again and again and again and again and again, before he hold out. And that was on the pot threes. <laughs> While his strength may not have been on the golf course, Paul demonstrated his prowess by reporting and writing about this great game, which became a passion for him. It's likely Paul has written about nearly everyone in this room at some point, but it's certain that everyone in this room has a great story about PK. Before I share some of those stories, I'd like to show you a brief video. Thanks to past RIG President Bill Money, along with Jay Siegel, who's considered one of the best amateur golfers of all time, this is a moment that Paul learned of his induction into the Rhode Island Golf Hall of Fame. Hello. Paul, it's Joe again. Joe, yeah? Yeah, um, these guys wanted to uh, have a little conversation with you, so uh, hold on one second. We got Jay and Bill again. Yeah, hold on one second. Outstanding, happy to. Paul, you know, this is Jay, I'm here with Billy, and we, we just heard some wonderful news uh, about a wonderful guy, and I, I'm going to turn it over to Billy to let you know what we're talking about. Very good, thank you, Jay. Paul, uh, do you remember when we started the Rhode Island Golf Association Hall of Fame at Kirk Bray one night? You were there. Well, I want to tell you that uh, you have been unanimously voted into the Rhode Island Golf Hall of Fame. It is not for publication yet, but it will be. And we just wanted to let you know that. Well deserved. Well earned. somewhere along the line and I think that it's trying to schedule the event for August sometime but it was going to be at Kirkbray but as you know Kirkbray had a fire so I don't know what's happening there but uh, it'll be, it'll take place later this summer sometime congratulations okay Paul congratulations see you later bye bye For the record, there was no place we were going to have this induction for Paul other than Kirkbride Country Club. <clears throat> that moment occurred during this past season's Northeast Amateur at Juana Moise. I was there covering the event for the RIGA, and I introduced myself to Jay. Lenny said to, to Jay, Joe works, worked at the Providence Journal. Jay quickly responded, do you know Paul Kenyon? How is he doing? So for the next few hours, the three of us shared PK stories. Jay said, I would love to speak with Paul. Not a problem. I quickly dialed his number and the group of us had a brief conversation over the speakerphone. And when the call ended, I, I informed Jay and, and Billy that PK was being selected into the 2023 Hall of Fame. Based on their reaction, it was decided that they should be the ones to tell him. And they gave Paul the great news that day. As a fan, Paul attended the 2021 Rhode Island Amateur here at Kirkbury. 
This is one of my favorites. Bobby Leopold was atop the leaderboard en route to his, winning his third state championship. He was preparing to hit his tee shot on the par 317. He was focused on the task at hand. Paul was sitting in a golf cart, somewhat hidden in the trees behind 17 and 10. Leopold somehow spotted Paul, stepped away from his ball, walked over, shook his hand, asked how he was doing, and thanked him for all the years of great coverage. It was definitely out of respect. I wish I could pass the mic around <clears throat> the room so all of us could share a personal PK story. But unfortunately, it's not enough time. But I think someone in the room might want to share one story. Brad? Paul used to, it was the first interview I ever got, uh, I believe it was a Pawtucket Country Club, and he was the iPad Notes app before there was an iPhone. He could look at you when he was writing down on his little tiny pad with his cross pen, right? You always, Brad Boss is here, so say yes, Paul. <laughs> but when I go through any scrapbook, Paul Kenyon's name is the first name I see. And there, you know, in those moments when you're impressionable as a teenager, um, these indelible moments you left in our lives, uh, I'll never forget you from the beginning of, of my golfing life. And to be back here in Rhode Island, to see you here, a member of the Hall of Fame, means an awful lot to me. Congratulations. Paul changed my life and sent me on an unexpected career path in 1995. I was an editorial assistant in the sports department at the Providence Journal when Paul approached me and said he needed help with a project. Back then, the journal published an annual golf section, which was epic. I'm sure everybody in this room remembers it. That year, Foster Country Club became a member club of the RIGA. Paul asked me to go to Foster, play the course, interview a few people, and write a story for the golf section. Of course, my response was, what, right? Me? Are you kidding me? I barely, you know, passed high school English. You want me to write a story? I can answer phones and take in high school scores, and, and we're going. I had no idea what I was doing, but Paul, since Paul asked, I agreed to help. At the time, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I did know that whatever it was had to involve sports. It was a Sunday when the golf section came out, and when I saw my byline for the first time in the Providence Journal, it was then that I realized what I wanted to do. So it is my honor, and please join me in a standing ovation as we officially induct Paul Kenyon into the Rhode Island Golf Hall of Fame, class of 2023. So very, very much. I'm overwhelmed. It's the most amazing night for me. From the 1970s on to this very day, Joe Sprigg Sr., Jay Sprigg Jr., and Bobby Ward have done a tremendous job in opening it up and making golf what it is today, a truly open and genuine sport for anybody who wants to play. And I just happened to be so lucky. When I started covering in this Faxon and Andre Kidd, and not to mention Eddie Kirby and Pat Sheen and Rodney Butcher and so many others, we developed great players. And the Providence Journal, which had some limited golf coverage, said, uh, if you like golf that much, you go cover these guys. So, because of Brad and Billy, uh, I covered 13 U.S. Opens, and two Ryder Cups, two Masters, and two PGAs, and I spent as much time as I could. Bill Corey is here tonight, the current editor of the journal. Where I, I don't think he has Bill Koch and Eric Rube do what I used to do. And they said, we need the baseball game covered at Fenway, and we need the golf tournament covered. And I was the only one who said, well, give me golf. The 
Red Sox would be fine without us. <laughs> and I thank everyone for this amazing night for me. Thank you all very much.